I get a lot of people on stage checks where they say, I would put in flaps at this point. I'm like, okay, let's do it. Like, <laughs> let's make sure this is actually going to be a good landing. And then, you know, saying, okay, at this point, you know, we're going to open the doors because I want to make sure we can get out of the airplane once we land. Hey everyone, this is Liz Brassoff from Thrust Flight. I'm the chief flight instructor here. And today I'm talking with Megan. Uh, my name is Megan Lintel. I am one of the assistant chief flight instructors here at Thrust Flight. And today we're going to talk about how to impress your DPE on the private pilot check ride. So not just passing, but impressing them, right? So what comes first to mind for me is some of the flying skills, mm -hmm. right? A private pilot that impresses the DPE usually has excellent coordination skills. Right. <laughs> they are using rudder when they turn. They've mastered it in takeoffs, landings, slow flight, all the stalls, configurations. It's That is something that can really set you apart from other private pilots that impress your DPE. Yep. You don't just get by, you've mastered it. Yep. You've heard your instructor say more right rudder enough times where it really sticks. <laughs> mm -hmm. Definitely. On the flight, what else do you think would set you above, would impress your DPE on the private pilot check ride? Uh, one thing I would love to see more private pilots be able to do is kind of maintain situational awareness. You know, where is the airspace above me, next to me? How close am I to a Delta airspace or Charlie Airport? If I'm doing ground reference maneuvers, am I going to be too close to an airport to do that? Or if I'm going to an airport, do I need more time to prepare to go to this airport before I just go direct and then end up on top of the airport when I'm entering the downwind and making my first radio call? Definitely. Well, because there's many private pilot applicants that can get by. They can mm -hmm. make the radio call that's required and get the answer back before they enter the airspace, right? But when private pilot comes to a check ride, truly the examiner is trying to assess, do we trust you mm -hmm. to take passengers and family in this airplane with you? Do we think you can do this without supervision for the rest of your life, right? right? I mean, you have flight reviews and other things, but essentially you are giving them like a, a golden ticket. You yeah. can go fly when you want to fly. That's the whole goal. Mm -hmm. So anyways, having higher situational awareness or really being able to think multiple steps ahead of your mm -hmm. airplane, not just the very next step. Yes. I think that definitely impresses a DP because there's lots of pilot pilots that haven't quite built that skill up mm -hmm. yet. They can't think that far ahead or the sequence of if I do this, then two steps later that can happen, right? right? Isn't always built up to a high level. Right. So. I kind of just think of like setting yourself up for success. So if I know what's going to happen, like I'm coming to an airport, I know I'm going to land, I probably need to be like maybe on ground frequency or I need to do my before landing checklist because I know I'm going to land. So it's like things that I know are about to happen and what can I do to prepare for these next few things that are going to happen. Yeah, that so you set tower up in the active, mm -hmm. you had ground in the standby yep. and you had, you know, the next frequency you needed after that or you had all the checklists and papers ready in the order you needed them because you just came from hopefully a lower workload and cruise. Right right before you come into an airport environment. Absolutely. Another item in flight that I think really can impress your DPE is how you handle emergencies. Mm -hmm. The examiner is going to give you a scenario and that's what's tough is you know it's a simulation. Mm -hmm. It's fake, right? Yeah. And so when you have an applicant that really treats it seriously and responds like you should in real life, it can definitely set you apart. So let's think about that a little bit more. To even pass your check ride, of course, you have to handle it appropriately, right? right? But to impress the examiner, I think is when you start thinking about what actually would be here in real life. So in mm -hmm. real life, it's not gonna be a pilot next to you always, right? Mm -hmm. It might be your grandma and she doesn't know anything about airplanes. Or maybe it's some other family member or friend that you're taking with you and it's their first flight in an mm -hmm. airplane, right? Uh, or at least a smaller airplane. And so talking about like, the exit door operation. Maybe you briefed it before you started the engine, but revisiting that right, right. before you're gonna make an emergency off-field landing would be really wise. <laughs> or maybe talking about briefing on how you're gonna exit, where, which direction are we gonna head? What are we gonna do? When can you open your door or not, right? I think that all escalates you to impressing your DP instead of just, it was a survivable outcome. We made the landing, yeah. you know, in a clear spot. It's now, not only did we make the landing, I tried to take care of who was in the airplane mm -hmm. with me and really excel beyond that. Right. You also think about most emergency checklists. You've got items to try and troubleshoot the emergency mm -hmm. or stop it from progressing. You know, think about a fire, you turn off all the fuel or on mm -hmm. an engine failure, you've got all the, is it your fault? You know, can you fix Give this? It more fuel. Yes. <laughs> and then there's usually another checklist in most airplanes mm -hmm. that now say landing without engine power. I would say most of the DPs, at least in our area, will pass you if you can get through the beginning and have a survivable landing, right? Mm -hmm. But if you now get into the landing without engine power, ooh, right? You can really set yourself apart and impress the For examiner sure. on. I know that it doesn't end here. We didn't just 
uh, unsuccessfully troubleshoot it and now we're landing in a field, it's I also prepared for that off-field yeah. landing. So, I think it's wonderful. like really treating it like it's real. You know, I get a lot of people on stage checks where they say, I would put in flaps at this point. I'm like, okay, let's do it. Like, <laughs> let's make sure this is actually going to be a good landing. And then, you know, saying, okay, at this point, you know, we're going to open the doors because I want to make sure we can get out of the airplane once we land the airplane, if it's a little bit of a hard landing too. Yeah. Um, and I think field selection can kind of tie into situational awareness. You know, if I'm aware of where I am, let's say we're in the East Practice area out to the east of Addison, I know I've got a couple airports in the area. So if I know that I'm, you know, two miles from Rockwall, that's a great landing area. So if I, my DP pulls the power, it's like, okay, well, I've got my field selected already. I don't have to think about it because an airport is the ideal place to go. And if not, I mean, you know, we can still be aware of open fields and things that could be a good option or long uh, kind of not so busy roads or something like that. Yeah. Um, I think that ties in as well. I think a lot of students, especially private students, they look ahead of the airplane. They have an engine failure. They go through their checklist and then they're like, okay, I see a field in front of me. I'm just going to glide it in. But that field could be four miles away we could have lots of things right beneath us sure. or we could almost do a downwind basin final because that's what we're used to like we yeah. know when to put in flaps we know how to judge our altitude based on a traffic pattern and i think that would really impress a dp just being able to kind of execute this in the way that we're used to as a, a pattern entry yeah well and i would say to stop the panic response yeah. that my eyes zeroed in on what was straight ahead right, right? it's that's what's impressive is we can stop and think mm -hmm. and we're not just like what's in front of me you know the panic i've got to make a decision decision now, yeah. right? Let's talk a little bit more about the ground portion and how to impress your DP there. Again, first, what comes to mind for myself is before the check ride even begins, how you arrive and right. present yourself. That's not too particular to the private pilot check ride, but we can cover some of those basic tips. So right. I'm thinking, what are you wearing to your check ride, right? Private pilots, you've never done this before. So you need some coaching from your instructor or your flight school. You are not at this point taking a check ride to become a career bound professional, yeah. but I think it goes a long way with your examiner if you try and show them I take this seriously. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to show you I could be a professional representation of a pilot, not necessarily do it as your profession. So I think dressing that way, right, mm -hmm. which could vary depending on the season and the place you fly, <laughs> but it's not sweatpants, it's not pajamas, mm -hmm. it's not wrinkly t-shirts. Yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, none of those things. <laughs> and then the time you arrive, how often yeah. do you have students come a half an hour before check ride? Yeah, I'd say Every probably time? at least half an hour, if not yeah. more. Maybe they want to go gather some like weather briefing and print out some things off the, maybe they need to, you know, do the weight and balance, they check in the fuel load actually in the airplane to put that on their weight and balance, um, things like that. Maybe they're updating the winds or something because the winds have shifted since last night. Certainly. You have to bring quite a few materials to your check ride, right? Which as a private pilot, your instructor is helping you organize. And I think that also sets the tone before you begin the check ride mm -hmm. is, is it all loose and you are having to go back out to your car to get something that you forgot? Or is it organized in a folder or mm -hmm. some sort of bag, right? Where right. You, you can just say, here, examiner, here's all the things I needed yeah. for today. <laughs> I really can think ahead and, and my instructor did help me. That's what's so tough I think on the private pilot check ride is mm -hmm. if your instructor is not giving you the guidance on a lot of these things, it's not your fault. And the yeah. examiner takes that into account. But if we're talking about impressing your DP, mm -hmm. you've got it all laid out <laughs> ahead of time, right? Yeah. You like, worked through that with your instructor. Yeah. Like, you know, they're going to ask you or because you've talked with your instructor that you know that they're going to ask you for your driver's license or your photo ID, your medical, your your student license and your logbook. So if you have those things ready to present to the DP, it saves a little bit of time and it's like, okay, this person's really prepared. They kind of know how to present themselves. Mm -hmm. Definitely. As you progress into the technical questions of like the actual private pilot knowledge, I think a good way to impress your DP is being able to answer why. Mm -hmm. Not just, I know these are the required inspections or the required documents, but I know why I would need these or where they're located in the plane and if they mm -hmm. expire. And I just, I know a little bit deeper than the very first, my instructor said, memorize this list. Sometimes that's enough knowledge, right? But I would say the students that impress the mm -hmm. DPEs have much deeper knowledge. They mm -hmm. have clearly gone and done their own studying. They've read more than just the three page study guide their yeah. instructor <laughs> gave them, right? Or that they found on the internet, right? They have actually visited the original text mm -hmm. or they found additional documents, right? There was gonna supplement their knowledge because mm -hmm. there is a ton of information out there. You can't read it all, but an impressive private pilot candidate has read some of it. For so. sure, I agree.
What else do you think helps as you're answering the technical questions to impress your DPE? Definitely confidence. I think that goes for anyone, but a private pilot can be really nerve wracking because this is your first track ride. Maybe you don't know what to expect. Maybe you've never even met a DPE and it's a little intimidating, but I think if you can maintain that level of confidence, that'll be impressive. It's kind of like, I think this is the right answer, but it's like, I know this is the right answer. And if they kind of give you a funny look, then maybe you need to do a little bit more research, but <laughs> definitely confidence is important. You want to have a good first impression. Yeah. When a student questions every answer they give. I've even had students in some stage checks phrase every answer as a question. It's like, I don't yeah. believe what you're saying. Clearly you don't, you know. Yeah. Or it they're stuck doesn't... between two answers and I'm just like, you tell me. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't it bring an impressive presentation, yeah. that's for sure. <laughs> we have a lot of examiners that give us feedback on students being able to answer questions that they don't have memorized, right? Mm -hmm. That they should be able to navigate the resources they have to find the answers. Right. And again, I think that's a place where you can either pass your check right or you can impress your DPE, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's quite a few reference texts that you're allowed to bring into a check guide, mm -hmm. and they're texts. They're like usually in a textbook format that has a glossary and an index and a table of contents. And how do you find the actual page you need in these, you know, 500 or however right. many pages it is, right? Using an index, knowing the keywords that would apply to this topic or question mm -hmm. the examiner asked, right? And not having to like literally flip through every page yeah. and you hope you stumble on it and this was the one I highlighted purple you know where, <laughs> where is that page yeah. we've had examiners even leave the room because the student's mm -hmm. taking so long to look it up and they're like I'm gonna go make myself a cup of coffee we'll come back and see if they found it you know again a difference of passing versus impressing right and part of that can be tabbing too sometimes students will come to stage checks and they haven't tabbed with their farm and maybe that means they've never even opened it like they don't know what's in it or don't know what's in each section so I think tabbing can kind of force you to open it and force you to see what's in the textbook so you know if you get asked a question about preventive maintenance you know exactly where to go because you've read that section. Same thing with any other resources like if you look at the PHAC, the Pilot Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, you can tab the sections and maybe you struggle with remembering turning tendencies. You can tab that so you don't have to thumb it page by page. You can just flip right to it and say okay that's right I remember this now. Yeah. The last piece of advice I think I would give to a private pilot if they want to impress their DP is you are hosting the DP that day. <laughs> you might actually be at their hangar and they're sort of hosting you but but you're still hosting them for this event you hired them for, right? Mm -hmm. So things that I could do to be a good host, right, would be make sure if they're asking for documents or other resource materials that I fetch them for them, mm -hmm. right? If they're asking for the school's maintenance logs or something like that, right, let me grab that for you, Mr. Yeah. Examiner, right? And, and I go retrieve them. The keys for the airplane, mm -hmm. right? We have a problem with that one here because students are used to their instructors getting it and they think, well, the DP will go get the keys. No, no, you're hosting them. Yeah. They're, you know, treat them like your first passenger. Let right. me show you this experience. Let me show you around the airplane pre-flight. Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions you want to ask me before you hop in? Right? Do you need to use the restroom before we go? Right. Of course, they'll think of these things. But like I said, I think that's a way to set yourself apart and uh, hopefully impress your DP that you're trying to take care of them and take care of all the pieces for the flight because that's what they want to see and do it competently. And I have no worries about releasing you to fly family, friends, everyone right. else. Right. No, I so. totally agree. Well, I think that's some pretty good advice for those taking private pilot check ride on how yeah. to impress your DP. DPE. If you guys have any questions, leave us a comment or if you've got other ideas on how to impress your DPE, put it in the comments. We'd love to hear. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.